Welcome to the F5 Podcast. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Today, we're going to be talking about a lot of different topics, including aliens, uh, Father's Day, multiple aspects of relationships, and many, many more things. We look forward to you joining us on the podcast, and hopefully you enjoy. It's my anniversary today. Oh. Uh, thanks for asking. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Um, yeah, I'm here and I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Two years of marriage. Nice. It's amazing. Good job. Amazing work. Two years, two years done. Two years done. Another 50 years left. 100 left to go. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I really want to talk about aliens. <laughs> <laughs> this fucker. <laughs> and pyramids. <laughs> We could have talked about our anniversary. Where are some like... He always does this to me. Do you, he, you really do. Do you ever notice that when you edit that he always cuts me off? You could have won the lottery and right, you would have right. been like, so I won the lottery. And we do a lot, let's we, we talk do a lot about to know technology. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you plan on doing for your anniversary? Mushrooms. Mushrooms? Yes. Well, you're going somewhere. You're going on a trip. It's not like she's coming to the office and... <laughs> doing <laughs> mushrooms today. <laughs> What do, you, what do Ooh, you actually let me talk? Wait, go yeah, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. What were you going to ask first? Um, what is the importance of you doing mushrooms on your anniversary trip? Well, I wanted to do it for my birthday. Yeah. But then we ended up getting it gifted to us. Nice. Yeah. And it was one of those things. I'm like, you know, we have it. Might as well try to plan a day out mm-hmm. of it. And mm-hmm. Charles has tried to try he tried mushrooms a couple of times Mm -hmm. but he never had like a full effect or anything Mm -hmm. like that because our our doses our doses were very small or we had no idea because cat one day had made cookies or whatever and her disclosure was there may be a lot or a little i don't know i didn't measure i'm like okay i'm like okay and then i I felt like i had a good amount of it in whatever Mm -hmm. the amount i ate Mm -hmm. um and then he was just like i just don't know how to feel blah 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 and so he's been always like on this quest, right? Like we're like we're always on like a quest for life or whatever. And I definitely think that mushrooms is a big part of just like the awakening process or like seeing and believing in what we don't really know what's real, right? So it's like if you've ever experienced like a full dose or whatever, you see life completely different. Like if I can explain to you the visuals, it's almost as if you're looking into another dimension that is full of like, geom- <laughs> like, like geometric <laughs> like geometric shapes so like have you ever looked in like a kaleidoscope like wait do you know hold what on frank would is? you ever do mushrooms no i would not um, why not Just kidding. maybe when i was younger i have a What's child now i have never I'm, I'm say never uh yeah i probably wouldn't probably okay. wouldn't do it because not not only because I think it's, I don't I don't know I mean I, maybe I don't have anything against it but I I know that I don't any psychedelic drugs or anything that's mind um, altering um, is something that I don't react well to. Um, yeah, because you like to be in control. Word. N- didn't, didn't, didn't. Not necessarily. It's just uh, that's what Sabs has what, told us that yeah. like if. If you are someone that likes to feel in control, Mm -hmm. like for example, here's a good probably example that you can relate to Mm -hmm. when you're drinking and you might kind of start crossing the line of into drunk. Mm -hmm. Do you like that feeling or do you hate that feeling because you need to? I like being buzzed. I don't like being drunk, Um, but I don't like being drunk because of how I act mainly because you are out of control. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, I just don't like it. Uh, I don't. I don't know like how to articulate it. Yeah. That how I feel, but yeah. I just don't like it. I don't like how I, I, I act. Yeah. So act that weird. might be the reason why, because he gave us that disclaimer. Yeah. Um, and I freaked out because I like to be in control, but mm-hmm. I was fine. Mm-hmm. I think the microdosing. Is but a really it was microdose. Was like yeah, was a minor. Really, 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 really good like, step. There's actually this show right now that I'm currently watching called Nine Perfect Strangers. It's on yes, Hulu. Have I you watched it? it? Mm-hmm. My so parents my, got me into it. And it's so interesting, mm-hmm. right? I haven't finished it, so I'm not complete with the entire series. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just an interesting take on ju- – um, I mean, I didn't really enjoy the whole not giving consent to, about <laughs> it. Like, 
you know, it's like, what if we right. microdose you guys during our retreat and like all of a Winter sudden park. they're all just like rolling on the floor and like feeling the rug and like crying or I don't know, just experiencing all these things. But I just thought it's just very interesting because they talk about all of the effects that it can have. Mm-hmm. And then there is like that perfect balance between medicine and poison. So how, how much should you consume for yourself and your body? I think that's super important mm. when it comes down to. So one of the things that Charles is really afraid of, which I we've discussed, is the dosage part. Mm-hmm. So that's why he's very like the, the fact that we had gotten gifted like mushroom chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, every bar There's is. Yeah, There's, every bar like is, um, wow. yes, exactly. So every bar is weighed out specifically so that you can tell like how much you're taking. Mm-hmm. So I wanted him to be very like, this okay, insane. this is fine, right? Yeah. Like yeah, this- there's mm-hmm. candies too. Like for people that don't like to smoke and just weed or mushrooms, they mm-hmm. will have it in a form that you will enjoy, like a gummy bear or whatever. The Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, and they took it in like a little capsule form. So it's yeah. like, it's like you're wow. taking what was a the experience vitamin. Like? I didn't feel anything. I'm going to be honest. Um, really? we, we tried to make it as, um, what do you call it? Not potent, but he had us make sure that we don't eat a lot because then it's kind of like drinking that mm. you will feel the effects, effects a, little a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had cacao mm-hmm. a little cacao which also that was really good yeah so the cacao is supposed to help um alleviate any of the like feelings in your stomach in which some of the mushrooms can react to mm. so like if you happen to have like an upset stomach or something like that mm-hmm. the cacao and like the milk and sometimes tea can also help with that mm-hmm. uncomfortable feeling um as far as the effects goes i know that with even sandra had taken some and it was more mm-hmm. of like a relaxing what from what i felt from uh-huh. you all because yeah. I didn't take it when you guys right. all did it I kind of helped facilitate like a little ceremony for mm-hmm. you all with like the cacao and things like that uh, guided them through meditation and then just like everyone felt really calm and relaxed but see mm-hmm. I don't know if it was more of a placebo a- effect you know mm-hmm. of everyone saying we feel relaxed and then going through breath work mm-hmm. I think that relaxes anybody mm-hmm. you know so I feel like the environment in itself was very relaxing Mm -hmm. the Um, cabin was beautiful so it's like yeah and it was snowing and like i it was perfect but i don't know if i really felt anything i mean Mm. would that be then your like next step into potentially taking another dose yeah yeah right we'd kind of discuss that Mm. i enjoy it i think me and colleen were both a little bit a little bit freaked Freaked out out about like what it would do Mm. um and I just, I think, I don't know if that also played a part in it of me like constantly trying to be evaluating what's going on inside mm-hmm. that maybe it just kind of. What's that it. Joe Rogan drug? It's called uh, dimethyltryptamine or something. Are you talking about DMT? Yeah, DMT. Oh, that's different. That's that a is little, different. That's way on the other. <laughs> I feel like that's way on the other scale, but it's still there. I've never really taken DMT. No, I think one. That yeah, I don't really think, I think it. We're talking about it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but interesting. I, I recommend it. To Exploration. A, it's yeah. not like it's methamphetamine. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, and one of the reasons why I wanted to enjoy it with Charles is because I abs- I enjoy having these experiences, mm-hmm. and like I enjoy experiences with my my loved ones, mm-hmm. and Charles being one of them, and I want him to kind of like. You know, we're always, for me, it's like always trying to explore and discover new things. So, again, it's kind of looking like looking through a kaleidoscope. And it, I always yeah. get really excited to share that because I'm like, wow, the world is so different. Mm, yeah. <laughs> like you're literally stepping into this other dimension. And then, I don't know, you have conversations with God. And wow. it's an interesting time. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you Speaking have any of, recommendations for people that would like to try but don't know where to start? Like as far as like where they should do it, who they should do it with? Mm, I think I enjoy nature. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not dangerous to do it out, out and about. I wouldn't go hiking <laughs> and like, like I wouldn't go hiking and exploring things for, for me. Because right. I literally will just sit down or lay down and then just mm-hmm. observe. Right. Because you did yeah. it in Joshua Tree. Yeah, I've done it in Joshua Tree. I've done it in... It's such a what? first thing that comes to my mind is it's such a white person thing. A white person <laughs> thing? Yeah. Joshua, Joshua Tree? No, no. It's just oh. like uh, taking drugs and going out into the woods. <laughs> and then like, why is it such a white person thing? I know. Why thing? is it a white person thing? Because, because like 
white people like nature a lot. So you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking over here like, seriously? Isaac, do you not like nature? Do you not like nature? No. Do you I not like nature? nature? No, but. but You're yeah. offending so many people in this culture. It, right it's, now. It's, it's okay. It's That's okay. racist. I'm okay to offend. Um, no, but, but <laughs> so like. Funny. But, but White people like nature? But, <laughs> Egyptians like nature? Hold on. Let me just finish my thought. Their nature just so, sandy. They like they like nature to the point where it's dangerous, like, like it becomes how? dangerous. Like black people don't go in the woods and like hang out with mountain lions and, and bears. They don't do that. But Sebastian's like, oh, I want to experience the Hold weather. Hold on, you're using <laughs> you're using Sebastian as like the the primary the white, of person? white person. No, but he's he he likes to he wants to experience lightning outside, and he and he's like and Have every time I met like every time I message outside? him. Every time I message him, he's like, I- I'm in the woods. And I'm like, is there mountain lions? Oh, yeah, plenty of them. And I'm like, this what? I would not. Sense. <laughs> I know. So There's funny. always mountain lions, like where he's going, like no. in the woods. You know what? There are and mountain lions where he lives. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Yeah. There's some Especially right by my lives. parents in Brea. It's, yeah. They're Come on, things. guys. This is not a white person thing, like going out in the woods and being dangerous. I can be, I think it's an adventurous person thing. They yeah. don't have to be white. They can be Asian. Yeah. There's, there's definitely <laughs> different cultures that appreciate nature more than others. So you're not one of them. And you're saying Caucasian. I, I, I'm saying that because I'm half white. I can hate on my, my white uh, you know, ethnicity. Oh, um, hate but, on it. Why would you hate on it? No, I don't hate on it, but you I'm making it. fun of it. I'm he making fun of it. <laughs> okay. He said hate y'all. Well, what I meant was making fun of it. All right. Um, anyways, <laughs> moving on from... Uh, well, white, since white we're people discussing about this, well, let's go right back into aliens. <laughs> and so alien, Sandra. Is that yes. where this started from? Aliens? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about her we anniversary. Did, we didn't get to finish our so alien. aliens and pyramids. And, I, we're, and then we brought up how he always like does this to me. Subject completely when she's talking. It's a bad about habit. Like the hurricane. It's a bad habit. Yeah, you fucker. <laughs> so much to share. Right. Jeez, I'm so I'm, I didn't know you were that offended by that. But you can interrupt yeah, me because too. because of your intelligence uh, you, through it about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyways, That's funny. <laughs> so, pyramids and the aliens. Okay. And we didn't get to finish our. I don't know why you guys aren't like a, as interested as I as I am in this. I mean, I've been interested. I mean, you are, just hopped on the boat all of a sudden. <laughs> I feel like th- that has been like the main conversation for a lot of the. I know. Yeah. So, That's so why. it's like, what else do you want to talk about with pyramids hmm. and aliens? Really? Have, have we? Ta- have I talked about? Any, I feel like we've much? had a couple podcasters. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't there. Frank was gone for like five months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Are. Did you guys miss me? <laughs> your your questions for sure. Yeah. Okay. Your well, scenarios. I, I feel appreciated. Um, scenarios. So scenarios. the pyramids. Fucker. <laughs> 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 All right. So the pyramids are six million tons, thirteen acres. The whole thing, yes. Six million tons, th- uh, thirteen acres, four hundred eighty-one feet high. Okay. Um, two point five million blocks. Okay. And the blocks weigh from two tons to two hundred tons. Mm-hmm. Um. And the the top, the height, is aligned with true north within one si- three sixtieth of one degree. Um, so that's extremely like extraordinary. Um, you know, understanding that there's two point five million blocks and there's thirteen <clears throat> acres of these blocks. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you bring these blocks from a quarry that's one hundred to five hundred miles away? And and then build them and then build them to the point where they're uh, pyramids. Um, Aliens. <laughs> Dre put her tiny hat on, okay? She put her tiny <laughs> she did. Hat on, and she went down the rabbit hole just like all of us yeah. yep. have. And I mean, I've been a believer of aliens for a long time. I have. It's just we d- when I heard Sebastian say that we don't have the technology mm-hmm. to build the pyramids currently, we don't. The biggest, the biggest crane, <laughs> the biggest yeah. crane on the earth can only lift ten, uh, ten, ten ton stone, mm-hmm. and it can only lift it to a point of about a hundred meters. Mm-hmm. the The pyramids are four hundred eighty one feet mm-hmm. high, mm-hmm. and there's uh, seventy. To, there's some seventy to two hundred ton stones mm-hmm. that are high up. So what? The, 
how do we explain that? Um, and, uh, and on top of that, uh, so if you get the height of, of the pyramid, the height, mm -hmm. you multiply it by 43,200, okay. you get the polar radius of the earth at the very bottom of the base, right? You get the perimeter of the base. You multiply that by 43,200 and you get the equatorial circumference of the earth. 43,200 43, is the, is the number derived from the precession of the earth's axis. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm getting confusing, but, but essentially it's like a map of the world mm -hmm. of the size and the, the, this, like the, the size and the, um, the scheme of the world essentially is understood through the derivation of the numbers that are, that make up the pyramid. Holy fuck. How do they, Ooh. why don't they talk about that? What do you mean? That's just very interesting that mm -hmm. it's not just about the weight of the blocks. It's also in everything that goes the into design. it. The, yeah. There's a lot of like things that are derived from the pyramids and the, 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 the chance that that that's an accident is right. like, Zero there's no, it's like zero. When were they built? 4,500 years ago. 4,500 years ago. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, there's, there's even more to that. But it's like, okay, how do you, how do you bring uh, these big, you know, limestones up, you know, 400 feet? Mm -hmm. Well, there's the ramp theory. Um, mm -hmm. And that's like the ramp that goes like around mm -hmm. the pyramids. But I think that's been disproven multiple mm. times. So how it do would you just think be... they were built? I don't know. I mean, they they say there there was like sleds that they had to pull, and they they used like hundreds of of um, of uh, of people. But my understanding of like physics is when you're pulling a sled, right? Like a sled, there's friction. That's a force that's being that's that's slowing it down, or. Mm -hmm. Speeding, I guess not speeding it up, but slowing it down friction. So it's like, how do you get a sled, right? That, and that's holding, you know, one 200 ton, you know, uh, stone, right? Mm -hmm. And how do you get it so that it's actually moving fast enough to where you can build it within a reasonable time frame and where, where you can get enough stones where you can build it with, w without taking 2000 years to build. <laughs> like, hot on. Do you believe in the reptilian people? Um, that was, you know, the the first time I had heard of reptilian people in ancient civilizations was yeah. from that show. Oh. I had never heard of that before. That's one theory is like the, there's a lost civilization. And, you know, Elon Musk talks about this. He talks about that we, like every like 50 to 100 years, we completely forget how we built certain things. Like completely, like um, we forgot how to we, we forgot how to go to the moon. We forgot how we did it, and we had to relearn it because too much time passed and we didn't do it enough. Mm. That we had to relearn how to go to the moon. Mm. Um, so you forget things. Um, society in general and aggregate forgets things, and if we forget things consistently, is it possible there was a civilization? They had this advanced technology and they kept it a secret, and then. Nobody knew how to do it. There's no like manual on how they did it. Like there's no recording archives on how they went to the moon. <laughs> I'm sure there were. I, I believe. Well, that the of. thing is, it's not just that they forget. It's that there's new technology that they now need to learn how to do it on that technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. But but how how do you how do you bring these these huge stones 100 miles away from a quarry? How do you cut them? <laughs> Reptilian people. How do you cut them? How do you bring them for, for like a hundred miles? Well, the, the theory is like they were getting wet sand and they were putting it in front of this lead that would reduce the friction. So it was going faster. Well, whose idea was it about building the pyramids the, to say like, Hey pharaoh. slaves, let's move all of these blocks. Khufu or something be like, yeah. Khufu or <laughs> Pharaoh Khufu or something. I have no idea. I, really I don't have know. No idea. Yeah. Wait, how old is your daughter right now? She's two. Two months, or two years, two and years. three months. Two years and three months. Mm. Mm. What is the hardest thing that you have ever had to go through with her so far as a father? Boom. Mm. I think in public, when she wants something, she doesn't, she like screams. And I think that's the big, that's the hardest thing. And, and so everybody looks at you. What do you do? What do you do when she screams uh, out in public? <clears throat> There's a conflict in my mind of giving her what she wants and not giving her what she wants and letting her scream it out. And, uh, and so she learns that you're not going to always get what you want. 
And so I usually give her what she wants, but I'm like, I try, I I do the best I can. I do the best I can to, um, not like, like delay that as much as possible, but it's like embarrassing because people are like looking. So you never reprimand her. You just let her either scream or give it to her. Reprimanding in public is tricky. Uh, because uh, you never well, know depends who's what looking, you are Karen. Thinking. What Karen's looking at you? You know, we call Karen. them Karens. <laughs> Karens, yeah, mm. for sure. There's a lot mm. of Karens out there. They're dangerous. They're creatures of the wild. They're <laughs> they like to go hiking. <laughs> they can put you in. Jail. They love to go hiking. Actually, they should hike more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they 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 like to go hiking and put people in jail. Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, I mean. I'm not as embarrassed as, as my wife. She's more embarrassed. She's like, you know, people are looking at us. Does she like, listen more to you or your wife? Your daughter. I think she listens to both of us. Equally? But yeah. Yeah, I think she listens to both of us equally. But she understands. Like, she's starting to speak full sentences. Mm-hmm. That's she's crazy. like two two years and two, two months. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, niece. it's weird, though. When she comes up to us, it's like, what? Where did that come from? Like, she came up to me the other day, and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Did you just, what did you say? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, no, like, just straight up, what are you doing? I'm like, what? Where did that come from? And what how did you learn that? <laughs> what and, were you um, doing at that point in life? Do you have other kids in your family? Or is she, like, the first little one in a long time? No, there's a lot of other kids, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes we forget, like, where they're development is when they're little because you're like you're little you shouldn't be talking until you're five but then actually at two years old they should be speaking yeah i think like they have somewhat of a vocabulary maybe like 160 words 200 words maybe Mm -hmm. but it's just insane she understands most of what we say too it's Mm -hmm. weird and i'm like how are you under like i don't get it how are you understanding what we're saying um like we'll be like we'll say stop and she'll like immediately stop we'll say um uh you know even when she wants something uh uh-huh. even when she wants something she some stop. depends on her, her on her mood mm-hmm. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but she is like it's all about me in the moment when she wants something and then like she she'll she'll communicate that she wants to eat and she and she actually what she does is she like she'll she'll grab me she'll grab my hand she'll bring me to the refrigerator she and won't then say I'm hungry. And Dad, then feed she, me. So she calls milk and milk. Yeah. Milk, milk. Milk. Can I get some milk? She mm-hmm. didn't say it like that, but she says milk, milk, <laughs> milk. And then she'll like bring like if I'm confused, like I'm the one that doesn't know how to read her. Like my my wife knows how to mm-hmm. read her better. But she'll bring me. She'll hold my hand. She'll bring me to the refrigerator, and then she'll point at the milk. And then I'll be like, oh okay, <laughs> I get it. And I'll give her milk. And uh, interestingly, she knows how to go on her cell phone and she knows how to go on the cell phone find netflix Mm -hmm. she finds the the call button she's called me Mm -hmm. she's called um my mother-in-law like finds our number Mm -hmm. then calls us oh my niece knows how to say siri call auntie and it calls me yeah facetimes me so cute yeah Yeah. she yeah yeah what how old is she she's two and four months yeah that's insane Mm -hmm. it's crazy what the human mind can absorb yeah. and then learn from like uh yeah she facetimes she she's facetimed me and the first time she did it i was like hey so i called my wife back and i was like hey Silvana, like did you call me and she's like no actually emma facetimed you and i'm like what the? <laughs> this is like, like almost two years and i'm like where did you learn that you know she called me once from your phone i'm sure of did it she? because i got a missed call from you <laughs> oh she, she's then, called everyone and then th- now i'm like come to think about it because i texted you back you're like oh it was my child those are something like oh, that i'm like ha, ha, ha. she probably thought i was mom yeah because Molly. i get that a lot yeah that people want to call their moms and mm. they call me yeah <laughs> molly mom <laughs> mom molly whatever <laughs> however it falls into the list i don't uh, know but no that's happened yeah you're right and it's happened with a lot of people but Okay, I'll think of a scenario here. Oh, how's 75 hard? Oh, my gosh. Good good point. Where <laughs> are you? Wait, Wait I feel like that was... Did you restart, restart that? that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was Friday. like, that was a long time ago, you guys. No, he restarted on Friday. We th- oh, yeah. we're not talking about his completion. We're talking about the restart. But I got, I got to do like day three, and then I, I failed. Again. And then I got... With what? With 75 hard. Oh, he, he went to hard. Oh, he, he went to yard uh, house and had a snake bite. That's what happened. I definitely had a snake bite yesterday, so, so. I failed that. 
Um, there was a few times like uh, fuck, there was one time I ate Cheetos. Citrus <laughs> um, favorite, I know. I ate Cheetos, Cheetos, and then there was another time. Um, I, Cheetos, uh, your um, like guilty pleasure? No, my guilty pleasure is anything sour. Oh, like mm. sour candy? Yeah, sours are, are really good for me, and then uh, the the sour mambas. Those are really I good. love sour mambas. Oh my gosh! I don't even know what those. She are. likes sour stuff too. I, I remember. Love me some sours. You guys, you guys speak on all this other stuff, but uh, okay, relationships. All right, so let's say you have a child, right? You, I know nobody here has a child yet. She, uh, has, they have fur babies. Fur, fur babies. babies. Okay. Um, and uh, what are your thoughts on both of the parents working? What are your thoughts on nannies? On nannies? Mm-hmm. Chris, so my boyfriend was raised with a nanny uh-huh. um, because his parents own a business and they didn't have time to watch the kids. Um, so I'd be open to it if I could afford it. Mm-hmm. Um, but if not, I personally will probably forever work. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just my own thing. Um, I know other women prefer to you know get married and not have to work and be given that option that's fine but i don't think i could do it Mm. i think yeah me i would need that time to my like my own thing what about work do you derive pleasure from what what about work is so pleasurable um that i'm accomplishing something here i have the liberty and the independence of having a whole department so it's like, it's not just about me, but it's about my team. Mm-hmm. And then with my business, it's something that I'm growing out of, you know, basically nothing. So I like the accomplishment piece and then learning new things constantly um, that I probably would never be able to get over if someone said like, you can't work ever again. Right. Does the, <clears throat> do you think for some women they like work, but the, the joy that they derive from taking care of a child far outweighs Oh what yeah, they, what they get from work? Of course, um, because that's like that's your own blood. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know. I just I don't think I could ever just give up something that I am working on. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just me. But I mean, at the same time, I don't have kids, so I can't speak on what I would do when I would have a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like probably running a household would be like a business, mm-hmm. in my opinion, because oh, yeah. I'd see it as. I would see it as, okay, if I had a child and now I'm at home, I'm training somebody. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I'm training training. them how to, like, walk, how to speak. I'm teaching them. Training your husband. Yeah. um, So there's a whole aspect in that. And then I would think that taking care of a house and kids would be like running a business within itself. Like who's paying bills, like how are our yeah. systems, things like that. I don't know if that's just now because of like what mm-hmm. we've been indoctrinated, mm-hmm. like, you know, with in mm-hmm. here. But I feel like it would be kind of like that. Like you'd still have, I don't know. I would say that's like, I still have like goals. I need to finish laundry yeah. by this right. time or this time. So everything would be so like systematic and scheduled where it's like, okay, I'm running a business here. Mm-hmm. It's just different. Most, mm-hmm. most women know. think their baby daddies are our kids. Their baby daddies are kids. Their They're like husband is a kid. Yeah, baby their baby daddy, daddy is a kid. <laughs> Husbands. <laughs> they, you know, you know, you, the running joke of like, hey, you maybe yeah, you have like two kids, like have three kids. Right. You know, a lot of them say I've that. Heard, I hear that too. Yeah. I so hate it's like training your husband that. or your baby daddy. I wouldn't want to. I don't know. I wouldn't want to feel that way at all. Actually, no. it's a joke, and I get what you're saying because um, I hear it constantly too. But um, I think it is negative when you mm-hmm. you know start to think that way of your husband because it's like mm-hmm. i i am your partner i am your wife or whatever I'm it is not i'm not your mom mom, mom. yeah mm-hmm. i'm not your mom i don't want to be your mom and i i keep bringing this up because everyone that i'll talk about like i'm dancing mm-hmm. or whatever in my in my apartment and charles is washing the dishes they're like what charles washes the dishes i'm like why the fuck not you know mm-hmm. like it's not like i am supposed to do all of this mm-hmm. stuff like I will do the dishes. I will cook. I will clean. He will cook and he will clean. He'll do the laundry. So it's like, it's just, it's, it is a partnership. Mm -hmm. I would hate to be like, well, this is my kid. This is my man kid. Like that just, ugh, that grosses me out (laughs) so much. But I do hear that. So it does make me really sad for the women that are dealing with that kind of shit. I think maybe too, I wonder how much of it is like their partner, like the girl's 
um, enabling of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you start off with like, oh, let me like do this for you or do that, which is cool. But then I don't know. I feel like it's partially their fault too Mm -hmm. for not setting Mm -hmm. those boundaries, I would imagine. Um, Yeah. I think there should definitely be an agreement beforehand. Like that's something you should talk about before marriage. Like what are you, what are the chores? Like what are the, you know, house chores. Well, yeah, if you don't live together beforehand, then it's yeah, you should probably talk about it. But if mm-hmm. not, like if you're living together, you, you see it pretty quickly. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Like the expect, the unspoken Spoken expectations. expectations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm of the opinion that if like the guys or whoever's making the money and is <laughs> primary hundred uh-huh. percent breadwinner, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, then the opposite, the, um, the opposite gender should, um, do a lot of the house chores and take the bulk of that responsibility though. See, it's, I would it's see that important. so competitively so that I would win, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that it's like, okay, this month you're, you do all the, you chores. Do all the chores. I won. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of fun. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> but uh, I don't see it that way. Yeah. And me neither. What does that, you know, what does that have to do with anything? Um, that's just my, my he doesn't want to do the dishes. <laughs> This is my opinion. Like if I if I'm if if I'm making the bulk of the money or most of the money, but I think it's still important to help. I I don't I don't think it's uh, that you shouldn't help. I think if you're even if you're making most of the money, you still you should still help as a way to like refresh the relationship. Because you're it, the one hiring the cleaner. <laughs> yeah, 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 hiring a cleaner. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know if we believe so much in in nannies. Mm-hmm. Um, not yet, maybe. Or like caretakers, maybe. Well, I see. Some, sometimes we have moments where we're like, ah, we're considering the nanny. Uh, we should probably consider the nanny. Well, your wife isn't working, right? No. So in that case, I would never. I wouldn't get a nanny at this for point. what? Yeah, at this point. Yeah. If me and my significant other were fully booked on things and we just need an extra hand, huh. completely. But if I was at home, I'm going to raise my child from the moment they wake up to the moment. Like, I'm not going to depend on someone else to do it, but right. I also have my mother that would be so helpful. Uh-huh. So I don't, I'd be open to it, but I don't know that we'd ever actually like spend the money for it. I just had two children. They hired a nanny. Mm-hmm. Um, they went to, I think it was Guatemala. I might be mistaken, but mm-hmm. they went to Guatemala to meet the nanny's family. What? They, yeah. They, they wanted to make, extra sure that this was somebody that was a good fit. They did all the, they took all the right precautions. Um, and then they were on vacation one time and the nanny decided to take them into the bathtub and slit their throats. And what? Slit their throats. Yeah. For what reason? I don't know the exact reasons, but that's what she did. <sighs> and <clears throat> that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so two children, I don't know. When you have a child, it's like your world. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And Absolutely. and uh, and for that to happen, that's that's insane. So that's why I always have that thought in my head. It's mm. like, yeah, I don't know if I trust somebody else to take care of my kid. Just like mm. you wouldn't really trust somebody else to run your business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I think about it. Mm. But I might be wrong. Some mm. people do it successfully. Some people do. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. But you do hear, I mean, I wasn't going to go to that extent about slitting throats, but you always see like the nanny cams in which like they are abusing the kid and molestation. Yeah, I get hitting it. Hitting kids, you know, mm. which is insane. Mm. You know. Is your wife's parents around? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they help out at any point? They live too far. Oh, oh that's right. They live in Hemet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. <sighs> Way too far. That is far. So it's. You know, having kids is like it, you're, you're taking your relationship to a different level. There's a lot of, of work that goes into that. And there's a lot of like points of contention that you could have. Like the, the points of contention become almost like innumerous because there's like, okay, who's helping with this? Who, who's helping with that? Who's helping with, you know, um, uh, watching her? Um, who's helping with getting her medicine? Who's helping with you know, making sure that she's fed, who's helping with, you know, making sure that all her stuff is clean. Like if she makes a big mess, like what about her laundry? What about how he dresses? How, how, what about like when you, uh, go somewhere, who's going to dress her, you know, like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of points of like, you need to help here. You need to help there. And there's like, 
that's why I think when, when relationships, you know, progress, when they, when somebody has a kid, that's when like the relationship, there's like an inflection point in the relationship because it could, it could go way down or it can go way up depending on, it can increase the love or decrease the love. Because let's say for, for example, you're in a relationship where you have, where you're doing 99% of all the chores, you're doing 99% of all the work that's entailed and taking a, taking care of a child is a 24 seven job. It's not like a, like nine to five. It's like For all sure. the time. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, there's a lot of, there, there's, there's a lot of reasons to argue about things, but, but you have to work through it, I guess. Um, and it, it can increase the love that you have for each other, but it's, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work that you have to go through in order yeah. to, to make that happen. Well, it's kind of like what Sandra said, like it's a full-time job. It's a hundred percent more to have a kid. And then you still want to have your partner be just as helpful, even if they make more money than you. Yes. Yes, you do. You do. You definitely do. And it's important to, to help. Um, and you know, we've had, you know, conversations about this and, and, uh, it's definitely important for the spouse to help for sure. For sure. Um, now to, to what extent? I don't know. Like it's kind of hard. We're, we're like being with an entrepreneur, very hard, you know, cause they have to like the business me- is like takes up all the energy and all the time that's required to make it successful. And so when you do that, like you can't have any distractions. So sometimes it can feel like, well, I need more time. I need more time attention, things like that, that could happen in a relation, in a relationship. But I think I'm progressing. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? On what specifically? On, on, uh, specifically, uh, entrepreneurship in, in a relationship and mm-hmm. the amount of time and attention you have to give the business. Mm-hmm. Like it's almost like a child of it in mm-hmm. itself. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think it's even worth dating an entrepreneur? I mean, I think so. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, (laughs) I am, (laughs) Um, but I was going to say what you just said, that it's, it's almost like running a business is like having, it's another kid Mm -hmm. in itself because of all of the time and energy that it does require. Yeah. And you hear people say that too. It's my child or Mm -hmm. whatever. So I think, um, I, I mean, I wouldn't think that it is. It would be the easiest thing because even now for me, I'm just like, oh, okay, like having to put myself in a position where mentally I have to prepare of like, okay, well, right now it is like business time. And then right now, you know, set, uh, whenever we do have the time to have boyfriend, girlfriend time, it's like, okay, it's that. But I do have to be very conscious about that and just respect that. But I knew that going into it. Mm-hmm. Like that was actually one of the things that was brought up like really, really early on in the relationship. Um, and I like I knew coming into it, like I have to respect that in the same way that there are other areas of my life that I would like mm-hmm. to, you know, have that reciprocated reciprocated as well. But it's not easy because I do there are certain things that I want to take personal and it's like, ugh, I really can't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I really can't take that personal. And I just have to understand that. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, but I think it's uh yeah, I just I just like to put myself in perspective because there are other careers that uh, can be very taxing, like people who go into the military, right? right? If you're a, yeah. like a wife, it's like, oh, they're gone for this amount of time. Or people who are who like tr- travel a lot or like actors and mm-hmm. actresses, you know what I mean? It's like you see your significant other on, yeah. you know, making a scene with somebody else. It's just kind of like, eh, you, you mm-hmm. pick and choose your battles and you try mm-hmm. to understand as much as possible what you're going into and try to, mit- you know, mitigate through that as it comes. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, but I remember something you had said, like everyone has to pick their own shit sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> and like everyone has yeah. something to argue about. Yeah. But keep in mind, if you're going to argue with an entrepreneur of, you're not giving me enough time because you're putting it towards your business. You could be fighting about that or you could be fighting about someone that doesn't get off their ass and is on unemployment and you're fighting about that. Yeah. Mm. What would you prefer? And I've actually had to have that conversation with a friend because she was just very um, bothered by the fact that her significant other was just not giving her time. And it wasn't that he was just ignoring her. It's that he is working a full-time job while also um, starting a business 
And it's like, you could be arguing about so much other shit, but do you understand that the life you live right now is because of the how hard he works? Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, you know. I feel like there's too, women on, there's too many women that complain about the couch potato as opposed to the hardworking entrepreneur. You'd be surprised. There are couch potatoes. If now. you don't set the expectation yeah. um, up front or even like if for any reason everything seems fine and then you start to fight about like, well, you're not giving me enough time, like... You need to set those boundaries of like, okay, you know what? Yes, let's put intentional time away for just me and you. And I will literally put my phone away or make sure that my phone's on silent so that I am focusing on you and not the business. But when I'm in my business, I'm in my business. I can't be texting you all day long. I can't be calling you. Like if you're going to call me, it's going to be a quick call, Mm -hmm. but I got to get back. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to live the life that we're living, be happy with what I'm doing. Don't like, because then what? You want me to quit my job? You want me to end my business? And then mm-hmm. what? Yeah. And then what do you want to fight about? We don't have any money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. You're not making any money. Yeah. If and then it's one, like, are you fucking serious? I, I uh, find very infuriating is a couch potato. Yeah. Same. Yep. Absolutely. For, for women, but for just, I can't be around couch potatoes. I can't I can't, I, I can't stand them. I can't. Their conversations are different, too. Like, you know those people because they, they tend to talk about other shit that really don't matter. Yeah, d- d- yeah, it doesn't matter at all. Like, uh, um. <laughs> What, Molly? Okay. What? what are you thinking of? I'm thinking about how sometimes I am a potato. <laughs> no, that's no, fine. Not on the couch. Sometimes you can just be. Sometimes you can. You're, you're just no, relaxing. I'm like, and I'm laughing because I am. I could be a potato when I want to be. I, some, I enjoy doing nothing sometimes, okay? That's it. But yeah. I, it's that's purposeful. Different. That's different. Yeah, that's is different. completely I know. different. Yeah. That's why I'm laughing in my head. And then you just called me out. <laughs> what I envision as a couch potato is somebody that... Is on their couch all day, every day. Well, let's say, yeah, they're on their couch. They don't clean. They don't do anything around the house. And they're not making any money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're just like chilling all day. I know. Um, and the the the... Other opposite person, opposite person mm-hmm. or the the partner is working and stressing themselves out mm-hmm. and doing 100 percent of the work i understand that and there's from what i gathered from that tiktok post there's a lot of women that are in that position which one what tiktok post the tiktok post of ambitious men yeah, oh that yeah a long time ago. Oh. gotcha yeah and that post went viral and it got like thousands of comments of women saying, oh, wow. I wish my husband wasn't like this. I mm-hmm. wish my husband wasn't like this. Which is like, wasn't ambitious. Or wasn't was, was, was ambitious. Um, oh. And there were a lot of women that said, this is why I got divorced mm. because it, it takes a, it takes a toll on, on you as a woman. If you're doing a hundred percent of the work mm-hmm. and the, the person that you're with isn't ambitious and yeah. doesn't want to change their circumstance. Mm. what do you do with that situation it's like why even get in the in a relationship with that type of person anyways mm-hmm. but like i think sabs at one point talked about like type a per- people or high level like um top performers mm-hmm. can't stand people that aren't top performers like they're they just like it's very that is in work like you can't if you're not a top performer you, like being around somebody that's not one is like very if, like annoying to you it like just being around them because when you're like, Hey, we need to get to work. We need to like, we have goals that we have to achieve. We have to achieve them within this certain time frame, And they want to talk about like the next car they they're, they're looking at or the, the clothes they want to buy, or they want to talk about gossip. And you're like, this is a work day where it's like 11 o'clock and you're wanting to talk about what, mm-hmm. you know, it's very uh, frustrating. Um, and, you know, I, I hate to say it, but oh, one of our, our um, social circle friends married a guy like that. It sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Frank. <laughs> it sucks. It really does. <laughs> it really does. It really sucks. Sorry. Well, because if you have somebody that's paying for, the, uh, for an entire wedding and, <clears throat> and this person is just like chilling not doing anything not uh, lifting a finger the f- they're marrying them yeah it's your guy friend or no. your girlfriend it's a chick he's talked about it before mm. Mm. yeah anyways 
Any last comments before we wrap this up? 